let me start with uh, just a minute or two of my own story, and that is I uh, was a, a very healthy and very fit 44-year-old in 2010, so now you know how old I am. Um, when I was out for a long-distance run, I was actually preparing for a half marathon with a group of friends, and I had just passed the six-mile mark. Uh, we were running the course that we were going to be racing on in another week or two, and so they had set up a kind of mock course, and I had just passed the six-mile mark, and I actually had not been feeling well during that run that morning, um, but decided to press on because I was meeting this group of friends there. And I was about six and a half, maybe seven miles in when all of a sudden I felt extremely shaky and very heavy. And before I knew what happened, I was on the ground. And it turned out I was in a, a very, very fast, and as my cardiologist likes to call it, a wildfire of tachycardia. Um, I would eventually learn that my beats per minute were around 300 around 300 beats per minute at that point in time. And uh, I was only one block from a trauma center. And um, fortunately to the, the medical people that showed up on the scene, they realized I was really in critical condition. And instead of doing anything there and then they whisked me, I think they call it a wrap and run uh, to this trauma center where I coded as I was pushed through the emergency room. And so I was defibrillated and survived this sudden cardiac arrest. And, um, and within a couple of days, I spent a few days in uh, CCU there in that hospital. Then I was transferred to another hospital in New Jersey and was in their cardiac intensive care unit for about two days. And, and then finally, uh, cumulatively, they decided that whatever I had was really serious and I needed to be transported to uh, a specialty hospital in New York, which is where I was diagnosed with arrhythmi arrhythmogenic right ventricular cardiomyopathy. It just rolls right off the tongue there. And implanted with uh, a uh, cardioverting defibrillator. And, and really, I was told to go home, that I was incredibly lucky to have survived the event that I survived. Um, yeah, every person from the, the nurses and doctors that I met in the emergency room on that first uh, encounter in April of 2010, all the way through to really people who have even heard my story in the last couple of years, have all talked about from a medical perspective that I was remarkably lucky. And truly having heard the stories over the years and now known directly some of the families who have lost loved ones to sudden cardiac death, I, I do understand how lucky I am. And, it doesn't make any sense why I would survive and an incredibly healthy 17 year old like my son's dear friend, Albert Martin, wouldn't survive in the middle of a basketball game. It makes absolutely no sense to me whatsoever. Um, but these are the cards. This is how it was dealt. Here I am. And so uh, part of what I did was I remember thinking, I have to do something with this in my life. And so home I came from the hospital. And basically, I had been told to go home and live my life, go back to my life. I was really lucky. I now had this ICD. And, um, but, you know, only a week later, the ground that I was standing on was entirely different than the one I had been on just a week earlier when I had been out for that run. Yes, I was home. Yes, I was alive. Yes, I was beyond grateful for all of this. Um, but things had changed profoundly. I, I was a different person than I had been just a week before. I suddenly find out that I have this, in my case, inherited cardiac disease that has, uh, you know, most often is diagnosed in autopsy and has a uh, high propensity for um, potentially fatal ventricular arrhythmias. I have this ICD that is on the one hand gonna save my life, but is really terrifying to me about how it's going to do that. And, um, yeah, I, and then I would find out about a week later or so uh, that since it was inherited, my family members had to be tested as well, my mother, my father, my children, my siblings, and, uh, and my sons, my then young sons, uh, adolescent ages, um, and my mother all came back positive. And so that profoundly shifted the landscape as well. But as a psychotherapist, and given the areas of specialty that I explained to you a few minutes before, really my thought was, well, if anybody is capable of navigating this ground, it's going to be me. Because I've done this work, I've walked other people through it, I know so much about it. 
But there is, there's nothing like being on the inside of an experience like this, as I said, to teach you really what you don't know. And, and not only that, I did have a tremendous amount of knowledge and still it wasn't enough to keep me from waking up in the middle of the night in cold sweats and being terrified about what was going to happen. It certainly didn't keep me from being shocked by my own device and having to navigate what that was like as well. And, and also from, from what it meant, again, I was so grateful to survive. Um, but what does it mean to live with a chronic disease? And how do you pick up the pieces and go forward with your life when you have this, this experience that's walking parallel with you? Every minute when you open your eyes, maybe the first thought is, oh, I have this cardiac condition or this other chronic disease that I have to live with and navigate. And if it's an inherited disease, maybe I have to live with it in terms of helping my children navigate with it as well. And, um, and so it really helped me to understand how incredibly complex this was. And that if, if I was struggling with it, what in God's name were other people doing with it? And a whole area opened up to me that I had never really considered before, which is what I called everyday heroes. The people who wake up every single morning, 167 million people in the United States who wake up every single morning with a chronic disease, many of whom have silent diseases as we do with cardiac illness. So nobody on the outside would even know what's happening um, and have to, before they even start their day, wrap their head around that and navigate the challenges of that in their lives. And what an added stressor that is in life. 